Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about plantibodies that what are plantibodies and how these are being produced in plants. So without any delay, let's start the video. So before directly going into plantibodies, first of all we should know that what are antibodies. So as you know the antibodies these are antigen binding proteins which are present on the surface of B cell and these are generally secreted by plasma cells. So this is the structure of a typical antibody and an antibody consists of two light chains and two heavy chains. So in order to make the complete functional antibody in the plants we have to make all of these four chains that is two light chains and two heavy chains. Now what are plantibodies? So as the name indicating plantibody so these are the antibodies which are produced in the plants. So generally we just you can say introduce the genes for both these light chain and heavy chains into the plants. So as the genes they are now inside the plant so they will express and they will form this light and heavy chains which will ultimately join together to form a functional antibodies. So those antibodies which are produced by the plants due to the introduction of antibody genes. These genes may either from human or from mice and this process is known as genetic transformation. Now why we are taking plant for the production of antibody? What are the advantages of plants being used as a model for antibodies? So first that plant it can easily assemble the heavy and the light chains into the complete antibody because we are introducing chains for heavy and light chains but the plant will itself combine these two heavy and light chains with itself to make complete functional antibody. Second that the plant they can also perform or they also permit the post translational modification. Post translational modifications are those changes which are generally done in the protein after its translation and due to these post translation modification protein become functional. So antibody they also require post translation modification like for example they require glycosylation that is attachment of carbohydrates. Now this plant they permit the post translation modification so that the functional antibody will be produced. The next that why they are suitable so generally there is a very low risk of contamination by bacteria toxin or viruses and the production of antibody in plant is a low cost process means it's a cheap process to produce the antibody within the plants. Now what are the different strategies which can be used for the antibody production in plants so they include first as I told that we transfer the genes of both heavy chain and light chain of antibody. So first strategy it can be like that we can make two transgenic plants one having the gene for heavy chains and other having the genes for light chains. Now these two transgenic plants they will be cross with itself to make a you can say this a hybrid plant or we can purify heavy and light chain from both of these plants and now combine them to make a functional antibody but it's you can see it's a lengthy process. Second strategy could be that we can use two different vectors. One vector have the gene of heavy chain while other vector having the gene for light chain. So both of these vectors they are now introduced into single transgenic plant. So the plant will produce antibody because it has two vector one containing heavy chain and another containing the light chain. The next strategy could be that we can use single vector and in the single vector both the heavy chain and light chain they are introduced and now this single vector is now transformed into the transgenic plant and now the transgenic plant will form antibody. So these three strategies could be possible and out of these the third one that is single vector is you can say it is the most appropriate strategy for making antibody in the plant because here we are using single vector carrying both of genes the genes for both heavy and light chains in a single vector so it is the most appropriate strategy. 
now the basic plant antibody production process so it include first of all we isolate the antibody genes means we isolate the genes for heavy chain and genes for light chain now after the isolation of genes these antibody genes now these are transferred into plant cells they can be transferred into plant cell either by physical method like particle bombardment electroporation or by chemical method or by biological method in which we use agrobacterium mediated gene transfer so by either method we can transfer these antibody genes into plant cells once the genes are inside the plant cells now we insert these transformed cells into the plant embryo for the further development so as now these genes are the plant embryo so this plant embryo will now finally undergo for the you can say plant development and now propagate in the field so complete antibody will be formed inside now the completely regenerated plants from there we can purify our antibodies now what are the advantages of antibodies so this ad advantage of this plant antibody they include first as i told they are cheap to produce means they are it is a low production cost step or procedure next they are safe means as i told these are free from any kind of virus bacteria and toxins so they are safer next advantage that most effective means it is generally found that the plant antibodies are most effective and they are also stable during the storage when we store them for the future so they are stable during the storage process so these are some advantages of this plant antibody disadvantages of plant antibody they include that they may cause allergic reaction it has been seen that the plant antibody the antibody which are formed inside the plant they may cause certain allergic reactions and the glycosylation pattern may be different means glycosylation is a process of post translational modification you can it is a type of post translational modification in which carbohydrates are attached to the protein so in the plant antibody sometime the glycosylation pattern it may be different which is required so this also may be the disadvantage of plant antibody now this plant antibody may be contaminated by pesticide because we are using lots of pesticide these days so these antibodies which are produced in the plant which are heavily you can say infected with these pesticides so these pesticide may be contaminate the antibody so this is also a disadvantage of plant antibodies now the applications of plant antibody they include so application include like for example here is the example of plant antibodies like the antibody which was made in the plant they were used for the treatment of dental caries the streptococcus mutans it this bacteria it caused the tooth decay the plant antibodies they were made made against this streptococcus mutant in the tobacco plants and this anti streptococcus mutant plant antibodies they provide you can say it they provide the four month protection when they painted on the teeth so this is the example of plant antibody that is anti streptococcus mutant plant antibodies they gave protection against this streptococcus mutant mutants which cause the tooth decay for the four month so specifically this plant antibody they inhibit the bacterial attachment to the tooth surface means when this plant antibody they uh, they painted on the surface so they inhibit the bacterial attachment to the tooth surface so this is the application with one example of this plant antibody so that's all about this plant antibody see you in the next video till then thank you very much